It is an absolutely beautiful day in tropical far north Queensland and I'm going to show you one of my favourite plants, the Atherton raspberry, also known as the native raspberry. But there are two things that you need to be aware of. Hi, I'm Debbie. Welcome to Vintage Food Farm. Let's go and have a look at this beautiful native raspberry. So even though it is the dry season, it has been raining quite a lot. And you can see how beautiful and green everything is. And all of these tomatoes are starting to flower now and come up. And we've got some rosellas there. And you can see there's some tomatoes starting to come up there and there all the way along we've got some sorrel I think that's uh, broccoli could be cabbage not sure and along here you'll remember we used to have pumpkins all along this fence so they died off at the end of the season but now they are all coming back again and over here there's just pumpkins that we chucked down and they are starting to grow now. That's how lazy we are. So right now we're in the middle of the dry season, which is sort of like our winter. So everything is starting to come up, especially because it's so warm. So everything that went um, sort of a bit south at the end of the wet season, where it all dissolves a little bit and all the, the more Southern type plants just completely disappear, are all starting to come up again now it is so beautiful and so excited the one thing i'm really looking forward to which i planted um it didn't self-seed is the larger tomato so if you've watched some of the videos you know that we have cherry tomatoes just come up like weeds everywhere thousands and thousands of them but sometimes we do miss the larger tomato so i did plant some of those this year and i'll show you so right down the back there in that last bed across the walkway that's where the uh, native raspberries are but in here, you can see that these are all the tomatoes that are starting to come up now. And they will make their way right up this trellis. There's some beautiful little tomato flowers. We've got a mixture of things on this trellis, but you can see how healthy these tomatoes are. And it won't be long until they start to give us some fruit. So beautiful. And there's heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps. That's a zucchini flower right there. We've not had a lot of luck with zucchinis, more tomatoes. We've not had a lot of luck with zucchinis, but this year they look better than normal. So I'm hoping that because it's a little bit warmer and also we're gonna grow them up over the trellis to see if getting them out of the wet ground um, will actually help. So fingers crossed, we will get zucchini this year. You can see here too, that's just a baby bitter melon that's coming up. Very cute. They're really nice if you eat them young and they're not as bitter. And then we've got some tree lettuce coming up more bitter melon in this bed we've got some cherry tomatoes heaps and heaps and heaps of cherry tomatoes and some spinach and some okinawa spinach which is very yummy we've got both okinawa and longevity spinach i actually prefer the longevity spinach it's very beautiful and then up the top heaps and heaps of papaya still we get a heap of papaya every single day, enough for us and the chickens. I'm just gonna grab a few bits of this spinach. For the chickens. They love it so much. I'll go and get them a heap more later. So making our way down here, you can see how wet the ground is. These are just some old papaya stems that have dropped off. But what this plant here is, this is a ground apple. So that is something like a sort of apple texture potato that we can grow in the tropics. And I'm hoping that these produce seed. Fingers crossed. 
and then this here is asparagus with nasturtiums growing in the middle of it and you can see here if we'd gotten this earlier that would have been a perfectly respectable asparagus but when you leave them they turn into these asparagus ferns and the ferns then grow and get the energy from the sun and feed the tuber type asparagus plant underneath and that, and that produces thicker and better asparagus. So making our way down towards the that's a weed that went badly um, so you can see here these are all the dried pods of the wing beans and if I open it up you can see these are either something you can eat as a legume or you can just plant them for next year there's our sweet potatoes do you want some sweet potato leaves as well do you want some sweet potato leaves go And then here is the piste de resistance, which is the native raspberry. Just look at how much foliage, but also flowers that are turning into berries. So you can see these started off as flowers and then they lose their petals and they become a little green berry. And there are thousands of them. And then they turn into these beautiful red raspberries and there are so many up to the sky that's actually a rogue tomato that's in there you can see down in there there's some cherry tomatoes just look at this look at the size of these raspberries can I help you mr. Rotty the rooster What's your problem? Who was that crowing? Was that Nazi Lamac? Oh dear Nazi, that's not a good crow. Hello Prawn Dumpling the chicken. Hello, how are you? So back to raspberries, you can see the size of them is enormous. The colour of them is absolutely beautiful heaps of them coming up so I've done a heap of research and as far as I can tell the Atherton raspberry and the native raspberry is exactly the same thing but I may be wrong the botanical name is Probus robus um, which I like because it sounds like a transformer um, but it, it originates in Australia and it is a bush tucker food which is really exciting and it also originated in Papua New Guinea so this whole northern australia into the torres strait and papua new guinea so there are two main problems with the atherton raspberry or the native raspberry and that is the prickles and they are very very spiky and not just spiky they grip onto you and also the way that it sends out runners which thank you rotty which i think could be quite invasive unless you have it in the right position so we've got it in this garden bed and we've got it in here for a reason because you can see how far over this is growing. That's how quickly it grows. And you can see all of these beautiful berries, but I'm just going to very carefully, ah, you see, look at my hand. Do you see how it's actually gripped onto my hand? And does not easily come out. And the other problem is, is that it sends out runners. So even though these are in a huge, quite high garden bed, it manages to get its roots right down to the bottom and then come out of the bottom and then little plants grow up all around the base. Now that doesn't matter because we've planted them in this raised garden bed and when they grow up from underneath into the grass around we just mow it. So we've got a way of keeping it under control. So you don't need to plant it in a raised garden bed but if you plant it on the ground you really need to be able to mow around the area that you want to restrict it to so that it can't come out any further. The other thing that we've found with the native raspberries is that the first year they tasted fine like they were still nice but they weren't as nice as a normal raspberry they were just um just a little bit less flavor than your standard raspberry this year which is year two 
they are absolutely beautiful they have so much more flavor and I don't understand why but for us that is what's happened and when I've spoken to other people they've said that that is a thing so if you plant them don't judge them on the first year's fruit you'll still love it but wait for the second year um, and possibly even getting better over time and taste test it tastes very much like a normal raspberry um, but it's a little bit more tart a little bit less sweet and a little bit um, softer but still absolutely beautiful so in the first year they grew extremely quickly we knew we wanted to only have them in the bed because we'd heard how quickly they grow so last year which was the first year we had kilos and kilos of fruit we would eat them we would throw them to the chickens um, I didn't make jam or anything like that because I find in the tropics like if you like jam you could certainly make jam out of it but because we've got a constant flow of fresh fruits and vegetables I don't really get a chance to want to preserve anything yet um, I'm not saying I won't and I've got the jars to do it I do like to make a lot of pickles um, but I have not made any jam with them yet we had all the fruit then the cane started to go a little bit yellow like the leaves all started to go a bit yellow and it just looked a bit ratty um, so I cut it all off to the base so we just went through and just cut the whole thing down to that level all the way across and believe me you need gloves to do that and then and so you can see actually in here you can see where some of the cut down branches are and then within a matter of weeks it was back up again and then within a matter of a couple of months we are getting all of these so all of these little green ones are going to become beautiful red raspberries got to say once you learn the technique of, of handling the prickles um, it's not an issue like it's not an issue for me at all the only thing that is an issue is when it overgrows so far and we want to mow um, so you've sort of got to duck underneath <laughs> to get the mower in um, which is an issue and I need to keep it trimmed back for that reason but to cut it back or to trim it back it's just a case of wearing gloves once you wear gloves um, the prickles don't get you and basically you would just grab a whole with gloves on you would grab a whole bunch and just cut them all and I put them straight into the gorilla cart or into a wheelbarrow um, so that I can take them down to the fire pit I don't want to throw them on the ground which I do with a lot of things that I trim because I don't want to stand on those prickles at some point I don't want the dogs to stand on them I don't want the chickens to stand on them so I just put them in the fire pit and they dry out and then we burn them off with all the excess wood so these are not starting to die off obviously they're just getting all this beautiful fruit so pretty but you can see here there's some brown around the leaves when they do start to die off you sort of see that first and then they go a bit yellow and then they just start to look ratty and you'll know that they've already fruited so that's when you would cut it back so the reason that we don't have any of the suckers around here is because we mow it and you can see here for me to walk through here now I have to get down very low and carefully go through or I will get grabbed by those thorns so pretty I will show you here so this is the garden bed next to the raspberries if you have a look in here that is a native raspberry that has somehow gotten from over there and here is another one so I don't think that the runners could have gone all the way from that one bed all the way over to this bed but I'm not sure it looks to me like a bird or the wind has taken some of the seeds from the raspberries um, and dropped them over there but it could be either way so if you don't want more raspberries just pull them out when they're little like that it's easy um, but they are the two issues um, that are a negative for the native raspberry which is the suckers and also the spikes 
Having said that, I totally recommend you grow these. You could grow these in a pot and you would have no problem at all keeping them under control and you would get a decent amount of fruit just from one pot. You could plant them in the ground as long as you can mow where you don't want them to go. So don't put them in the middle of a beautiful landscaped rockery garden because they will take over the whole garden. Um, have them out in the middle of a lawn patch so that you can mow around them and keep them under control. So if you wanted to give plants to someone else, you could easily just, I haven't got gloves on, so you could easily just pull that up and give that away as a plant or plant it in a pot so that you've got more raspberries to plant somewhere else. The fact that that pulls up like that makes me think there's not a runner and that it's grown from seed but I really do not know because there's some things that say the seeds aren't viable as well. If you wanted to propagate more you could also just reach in here and pull out some of this with some root and put it straight into a pot and you would have limitless native raspberry plants to either plant yourself um, or give away. The only thing I would say with that is you don't need many plants to get a lot of fruit and even if you started off with one plant you would see it multiply so quickly um, that you'll be very happy with the amount of raspberries that you have. So when I was doing a bit of research on Atherton raspberries or native raspberries I found that they have actually now developed one that has no spikes um, which you can get from an online nursery so if that is an issue for you I've also spoken to people that have grown them in pots and they said that they do sometimes have runners that come out but that it's easy to break them off. Um, I read that the seeds aren't viable so it may or may not be a case of whether they've gotten into the next bed through runners or through seeds, I don't know. Um, I'll find out eventually because it'll, it'll keep growing. So that is it, that is the absolutely beautiful native raspberry it'll give you a ton of fruit, it is so easy to grow, just those two tiny little problems that if you can manage, it is totally worth doing. So when I'm doing another video in the garden in the near future, I'll show you how many raspberries there actually ends up being. I think because they're green, you can't really get a proper grasp of how many there are. It's so exciting. And that's our sweet potato bed there with some random chili plant. That's wing beans along the fence. And I'll show you the herb garden that we've refurbished when we did the pottering video. And you'll know that we planted some uh, spring onions from the shops. We are already harvesting from those now. And you can see all the curly parsley coming up I'm not really confident about normal coriander. We don't seem to be able to grow it really well. That's why we grow sawtooth coriander. All the parsley is going gangbusters. And the mint. If you watched the video on Mariba Markets, you'll remember I bought some $2 taro. Look at the size of these taro plants now. And I put them in a pot because I was scared that they wouldn't do well in the colder weather. Um, but they have done so well. They are huge. And as soon as it warms up a little bit more, I will plant them out into the garden. $2 taro, pretty good. So that is it. That is the Atherton raspberry, also known as the native raspberry. We absolutely love them. If you can put up with the spikes and put up with the runners, it is definitely a winner. If you feel like it and only if you feel like it, like and subscribe. But most importantly, stay calm in the farm.